Flight 236 is some 200 miles from the nearest land in the mid-Atlantic. 39,000 feet over the mid-Atlantic, some 200 miles from land, Air Transat Flight 236 is in trouble. Unknown to the pilots, the right engine is leaking fuel. The plane's computer system is thrown out a series of warnings, but the pilots believe these are computer errors. Have you ever seen something like this before? Nope. Never. Doesn't make any sense. Hey, even if there is a leak, it doesn't explain the alarms on the oil system. Well, everything was okay at the last fuel check at 30 West. Oh. Bet you it's a computer problem. The task of finding out if there is a fuel leak is made more difficult by the design of the Airbus systems. The systems monitor hundreds and hundreds of sensors and, uh, you know, they can be affected by, uh, you know, such mundane things as a little bit of uh, frost or ice on a sensor can, can, uh, can cause it to pre present bad data. There is no warning to show that the fuel level is falling faster than the engines are consuming it. So the pilots are receiving no immediate indication that there could be a fuel leak. Fuel quantity isn't rising in the tanks for the right wing. Check fuel quantity. It's very low. Hold on. When co-pilot de Jager carries out the calculations, he discovers there is something seriously wrong. It's much less fuel than we should have. It looks like a fuel leak. Check again. De Jager finds a disturbing difference. According to the, all the gauges, all the tanks in the right wing are way below the level they should be according to the flight plan, and, and there's hardly anything in the other ones. What about a trim tank? There's nothing there either. Yes? Hello, first officer here. Can you come to the cockpit, please? Sure. Although Captain Pache still believes he is dealing with a computer problem, he nevertheless decides to ask for a visual check just in case to see if it could be a fuel leak. Captain? Hi. Can you and Karen uh, take some flashlights and go to the windows if you can see anything trailing back from the wings? It'll look like a mist or a stream and report back immediately. Okay. Dirk. I want you to do another complete fuel check, please. In daylight, the fuel pouring out of the back of the wing would have been clearly visible. But in the dead of night, even with a flashlight, the fuel leaking from the engine is impossible to see. realized that the situation was not improving and uh, at that point they realized that there's that their circumstances were becoming more serious and uh, I think that there were probably some discussions took place between the two pilots as to what their next course of action should be if the computer is correct then with the amount of fuel remaining the Airbus will no longer be able to make it to Lisbon Got a direct. Get on to Oceanic Control, where is the nearest airfield? Transat 236 Heavy Santa Maria Control, can you advise nearest airfield? We have a possible fuel problem. The nearest runway is more than 180 miles away, but with the fuel remaining, Lajes Military Air Base on the tiny island of Tercera in the Azores should be within reach. Santa Maria Control, Transat 236 Heavy. Proceed to 30 flight level 390 direct. 350 miles to threshold. Are you declaring an emergency? Stand by, Santa Maria Control. Not yet. It must be the computer. Transat 236 Heavy, Santa Maria Control. No assistance required yet.
Flight 236 continues flying south for the next 25 minutes. Everything in the cabin seems normal, but in the cockpit, the fuel readings are getting worse. Must be the computer. Well, I've checked. There's nothing in the trim or center tank. And the gauges show only seven... The plane is apparently using fuel at an abundant rate. Whether they believe the gauges or not, the captain has no choice. He must warn air traffic control. We have to declare a fuel emergency. Transat 236 Heavy, Santa Maria Control. Santa Maria Control, Transat 236 Heavy, go ahead. Transat 236 Heavy, declaring fuel emergency. I really hope it's a computer bug. Because if we land in the Azores, and half a plane full of fuel will crucify us. But at 6.13 a.m., less than an hour after the first fuel alarm, the full gravity of their situation strikes home. The right-hand engine runs out of fuel and cuts out. We're losing engine number two. I don't believe this. Okay, maximum thrust on number one. The lights started flickering on and off, which I thought was kind of odd, strange. The Airbus can't fly at 39,000 feet on one engine. The crew must descend quickly. Try to transfer fuel from center tank and the trim tank. Transferring. Fuel quantity is reaching zero. This can't be. We're not gonna go completely dry on this airplane. All right. We can't stay at 39,000 feet with just one engine. We'll descend to 33,000 to control our speed. 236 Galagia's tower. We have lost one engine. Engine flame out. Roger, Transat 236. We can see you on primary radar. You are at 135 nautical miles from Lages Field. We are 135 nautical miles from Lages Field. For the next 10 minutes, the stricken Airbus continues on its remaining engine. The pilots still believe that the computer may be partly faulty and that they may make it to Leges with fuel to spare. At the end. Might be all right. Fuel gauge is falling fast, though. It's, it's nearly hitting zero. But 13 minutes after the right-hand engine cut out, and with 98 miles still to go, the left engine begins to fail. We're losing number one. Mayday, mayday, mayday. We have lost both engines due to fuel starvation. We are gliding now. One of the most sophisticated airliners of the modern era carrying 306 passengers and crew, is now nothing more than a giant glider, drifting steadily down towards the ocean. There was no sound in that plane, in that cabin at all. A lot of people were praying and um, screaming for God. List of functions we've lost. We have no more stabilizer. No blue and yellow hydraulic. No ADR 2 and 3. No anti-skid. No reversers. Rudder trim. Radio HF 1 and 2.